Hey guys. So today you and I are going to talk about migrations. So let's get into it. <clears throat> so the question in question was posted on an old video I made which is called what determines what part of a system to migrate and in that video I basically explained that that very much depends on the system and there are different levels of a migration where you can do it at the code level you can do it at like a project or team level and you can do it at like a multi-team sort of situation where you might do it for an entire co uh, corporate corporation or an entire company and I basically explained that the the det what determines what you do and how you do it comes really down to how well you know a fairly complicated set of skills and the higher up you go the more requirements are put on you as a software engineer and that's where you I refer to like at the highest level you basically need a genius level developer in order to do it effectively and so the person writes very good analogies but I'm not sure about the genius level dev requirement I did participate in complex refactorings and suggest they took time and in years and they did require something senior sometimes senior guys with great domain knowledge but would not call them geniuses really curious about what system would may need that but I'm sure you're not referring to Apple geniuses. So I actually replied and I said basically that my argument is that basically that evaluating the dif that the difference a given technical strategy has within a company and the net gain of that strategy is virtually impossible for the average manager. By that I basically said I'm basically telling you that most companies take whatever they do on faith and very very few uh, companies have a understanding of what actually makes a difference for them there is as I like to say there are more unused confluence documents written by the architects or whoever is currently the person who is in charge and their grand designs of how to do things or what tool to standardize on what practices to adopt and so forth then there are product teams who have a streamlined workflow and that perform at peak efficiency and my argument to this person is uh, it takes tech skills, business mindset, office politics and vision to do the thing that I'm talking about. And on average, if you have seen how much most companies are structured, there is usually one person for each of those things. But for a software developer to be truly effective at, at fixing this sort of problem, you will have to have a, a little bit of everything which is sort of the idea as you get higher up in a in your in your career that you get more and more in tune with what makes a difference for an entire company or multiple teams now this person writes back and says i think most devs have the brains to do it but probably won't as it might be a little be of little benefit to them and if it seems too complicated to be done probably some toxic culture and poor communication has creeped in I would personally not do it unless I'm a f I am the founder of the company so I'm gonna be blunt and I say I will say the odds of you getting to do this is very low because the way that you communicate is, as I said, is actually the reason why I think I'm. I don't think we are talking about the same. Like the, this person and I am talking about the same thing. When he, he or she is referring to a system to migrate, this individual talks about a system <coughs> or a few systems. What I'm talking about is that when you get to the level where you have to take charge of the overall product quality of an entire team's product or an entire organization that is beyond the average software developer the reason why I know that for a fact is because every single company under the sun that has any type of scales hires multiple people to handle that situation and not there is no one individual that usually has what it takes to actually figure this out and if that's a question of brains or a genius uh, level understanding of things or so forth I leave that to you to sort of dis uh, figure out uh, to, for you to, to to figure out but what I'm saying is that 
if it seems to uh, as this person is saying if it seems too complicated to be done it's probably some toxic work culture and poor communication that has creeped in no what I'm saying is that when you are at a sufficient size of company when your migration is something bigger than what you control yourself you have to be able to align a group of people on a direction to take and have them organize themselves in accordance with what needs to be achieved and be certain that you know how to execute on the goals of the company that is beyond usually one individual because what usually happens is that you have one two three ten different product teams that own piece of this like this bigger system they don't know what everybody else is doing. They don't have an understanding of how everybody else is working. The silos, as we call them, form very easily in larger systems. So usually what you have is that you have higher managers or tech leads or team leads or things like that, that you start moving up towards the pyramid. And the next problem that happens is that the higher up the pyramid you get, the less you will find people who have a real connection with the actual work that is being done and the people who actually have real serious tech skills. And this is why I argue that in order to do the thing that you want to do efficiently, you need someone or a group of people who have a true understanding of the entire chain of events that needs to take place in order to execute it effectively. Because a shitty system can be built if you just have the wrong API. A shitty system can be built if you have the wrong architecture. A shitty system can be done if you have the wrong ownership or the wrong product owner within a, com within a team because they're building the wrong things or you don't have a good quality process because everything is always buggy and flaky or you have one team of just junior software developers on a problem that is way beyond what they actually have the capacity to fix in another situation you might you might you can fuck up the whole thing by just having consultants who doesn't give a fuck about whatever system is uh, they're supposed to be building all of these different factors play in into the greater whole as i usually say when you work in large systems it's a network everything is connected which means that if something is not working at one or uh, one place or another it affects everything else and this is the thing that is difficult. This is the thing that requires a genius, I argue, in order to do this effectively. Because you need to be a person who has a fairly good understanding of all these different areas in order for, to, for you to be involved and structure the processes and actually set up everything that is necessary in order to get the results that you want. That is something that the demo, average software developer does. Like, I don't, do not agree at all with this person. This is not something that the average software developer um, knows. The average software developer struggles with writing unit tests or how you know to just have an effective Kanban work for like an agile work practice. The average software developer doesn't do stand-ups, for example, if they're not told to do so. But they're really good at writing a pull request and maybe doing a code review. And you're telling me that the average software developer is going to be able to take charge of a multi-team situation where they basically have to make all of these different people align on the same vision, the same technical quality, and the same business goals. Mm, I find that very difficult to believe. So, what I want you to take away from this is that what when I talk about that you require a genius level understanding to do a very complicated migration. It's not that you have to have that understanding to do a refactor in your code. This is probably what this person is referring to. That's trivial. You can have a senior or need some like you need to change an API or a single product or two products that are working together no problem whatsoever but it's very difficult for any company to figure out how do we create a successful system a successful like, uh, because it's fundamentally the same thing as ordering art from an artist you don't really know if this is the best art or like the most suitable person to do the job until it's too late and my point is that most people don't have a master level or a genius level understanding of all the things that make up an efficient delivery process because it's more than just tech.
if you want to have a truly streamlined um, software team that works at peak performance you literally need someone who knows how to set up the work so that the team works well together with all the communicate internal communication they have to have the right team ritual so that they actually work efficiently they have to have these a strong technical understanding and a strong business focus uh, and product focus on the thing that they are developing so they actually build something that is very well suited to solve the sorts of problems that you're dealing with and they need to have the tech talent to actually do all of these things at the same time and you can never efficiently have a group of people who can know one piece of that and have it all turn out just swimmingly because it, that usually uh, is it's very difficult to get a product owner who might just understand business to understand all the technical limitations or the office politics or have some type of shared vision. What I'm saying is that when you have a true master, a true genius of these sorts of areas, someone who sees across multiple fields or multiple areas and understand that all of these pieces play a part in the greater delivery, that's when you get your Steve Jobs. That's when you get your Elon Musks. That's when you get your Bill Gates. These are the individuals who usually have the levels uh, have some type of uh, they understand something fundamental and have something that most people don't and my argument is that if you look at the amount of large IT companies who have fairly large systems if you go and work in any of them you will see the same thing it's actually very difficult to find a architect or a software engineer or a product owner or any department that really na nails this who really has like high performance peak efficiency workflows within their software teams usually that's not the case usually the processes are suffering usually people have tons and tons of issues in most IT companies because this is actually that difficult and it's rare to find someone who is so good at all these factors that they can solve these sorts of issues. Have a great day.